The Winged Serpent, part two. Our story continues. So as we left off in the first part of this series, we were coming into the realization that the two stories, the two histories that most of us have been taught has only been one side. Now, the rest of this video is really going to get into what I really call those things that make you go hum because something isn't right here. So to pick up, this is Easter. Every Easter in the Vatican, this is part of how the Easter service is opened. And as you probably have read by now, it makes you scratch your head. So let's read this out here together. This is translated from the Latin, as we saw before. It's flame alight, O Lucifer, the morning come. And he, I say, O Lucifer, who does not know the going down thereof, Christ thy son, who, returning from the grave, human race shed his peaceful light, and now lives and reigns forever end. Amen. Now, let's just stop here for a second, and let's break this apart, because you have to begin to comprehend What's really, uh, I guess, is the background, the whole foundation here. Number one, it says that Lucifer, the morning come. Now, we're going to get into a little bit of this and see where this also is recorded. And he, I say. Now, I is capital in implying that it's the subject matter, the noun being spoken of here, which is Lucifer. Now, isn't it interesting that it says Lucifer, who does not know the going down thereof? We'll break this down. What does you think that it's implying that does not know the going down? Going down, right? And look what it says about the Christ. Christ, Jesus thy son, who, returning from the grave, human race shed his peaceful light, and now lives and reigns forever end. I don't know about you, but that just kind of really just makes me go, what's going on? So in my Christian biblical um, upbringing, and listen, as a child, I, I got very much involved at the age of 12. So you got some history here for myself. So I can tell you this, that the word Lucifer does not show up in the Hebrew. It, it, there is no word Lucifer. The closest that it comes, as it says right here, this is 2 Chronicles uh, 1118. And what we can really get here, as opposed to what Jerome did, in inserting, and he did, he, he, this is what I don't like about the history of the Bible. It's been so compromised that you can't defend it as being authentic anymore. It's not. But let's continue here. It says, my father is strong. There is some doubt about the spelling of the latter part of the word, and I am not a Hebrew scholar, and so those of you are, maybe you can help enlighten us all, but what we're bringing down is the translation of this particular passage. And it says that it's Lucifer, the morning star, which means remote and far off. And as you get down to this, it just kind of makes you shake your head again. If the word Lucifer as a deity, as a fallen angel, whatever, is not in the Hebrew, then you can only conclude that it had to be made up by the Christians. I don't know. I mean, as you get more into this, invo in, it, it's, it's invoking not only a, a, a blessing, it's, it's, it's the invocation, if you want to say. And look what it goes on to say. His flame, Lucifer, drawing his own creation. 
Uh, again, folks, what's the what's the Christian church doing worshiping either a deity that either does not exist or has been made up or has been hidden? Makes you think. And again, they all say, amen, folks. Amen. And so be it. That's the translation of amen. So as I continued into this study... And you begin to really begin to dig into the Vatican. Now, I was fortunate back in the 90s to work with a producer when I was in the video industry who actually had rare access to many of the catacombs, many of the secret places of the Vatican that the public doesn't see. And we discovered this when we were filming the documentary. But look at this, folks. This is a depiction of Lucifer, the morning star. Yeah. Now, when we start talking about this rabbit hole that we're going down, and we're going to go all the way down, we're going to go past the 33 degrees, in which if most of you who I know understand, that's as high as it can get. But look at this. Now, I have seen this in Manhattan. I bet many of you, and it's right there in front of us. Remember, folks, some of you, by the way, I have to say, uh, spot on, five gold stars, you guys have got it. Nothing can be done in the spiritual realm, the esoteric realm, wherever you want to go in the realm. It has to be done out in the open. It can't be done hidden. You can disguise but you cannot hide. Very interesting. And so the, the thought has always been for the longest time, there's a great book out there that I read uh, back in the uh, 80s called the, uh, the, T the Two Babylons. And the premise, and it's a great book, I'd recommend it for you today, is the fact that really the, the, the Babylon, the Two Babylons, is nothing but the reincarnation of Nimrod. And we're seeing this today by the fact of these monoliths. And whether you want to believe or that or not, listen, it's a fact that they're here. And by the way, for many of you who live outside the United States, and I guarantee there's many in the United States who do, does not know this, the reason why uh, the seat of the federal government is not in the United States, it is not in a state, it's in the District of Columbia is for a reason. We're not going to do the video on that, but trust me, it's one that's pretty interesting. So again, this is about interpretation. How do you see it? Now, this is very important. As you see at the beginning of the Bloodline Invader series, there's an emblem there. I want you to start paying attention to things. And this begins to show up in a lot of different governments, in a, a lot of different imagery and symbolism. All secret societies have a doctrine which is shown to be believed by the masses within and without. However, the significance of the double-headed eagle is that there is a reverse of that public doctrine that the low level and lower degrees understand. Now, folks, if you're not an initiate, I'm not, then we are considered to be second class. We're, we're lower. And it's only that the high-level initiates know the true doctrine. Well, guess what? I do know the true doctrine, and I didn't have to be initiated. So how about that? Uh, anyway, let's continue. Uh, know that the true doctrine of the high-level initiates is that Lucifer is God of the organizations which they control. Now, this becomes very important. What took place in 1964 with Pope Paul the sixth is very important here. In 1964, the enthronement of the fallen archangel Lucifer, highest occult ceremony, was conducted simultaneously in the Vatican and the highest Freemason temple, 13 blocks north of the White House in Washington, D.C. I've been there. I know exactly where this place is at. So, when you see on any crest, any emblem, anything, the double-headed eagle, Understand there's something here very strange. By the way, folks, I'll throw this in as a little bonus. Do you want to know why whenever the president of the United States speaks that the American flag is gilded? Ask yourself on that. So let's get back to what happened here. 
Why was this pope murdered and then replaced? And it's a fact. I've done enough into this. And it is rumored that Pope Paul VI was aware of this. Now, here's the strange thing about it. He apparently, and I know this is going to sound bizarre, what began to occupy the Vatican that came in was not this the Lucifer that is trying to be portrayed here. There was another force that took over. And we can begin to see by all of the, the bizarre imagery that now is being done within the Christian church, starting with the Vatican, is now spreading forth across. Now, when you get further into this, there are signs everywhere. It's again, I said in the first part of this video, that you have to collect the breadcrumbs in order to be able to make the loaf of bread. So what we know is that this is St. Peter's chair in the Vatican. Now above the chair is a tribute to Solus Invictus. What is that? Do you know what that means? It's worshiping the sun, folks. Constantine, which is supposed to, by myth, and it is a myth, been the stalwart of the modern Christian movement, folks, that story, again, is a forgery. And here's something I don't understand. Why is this statue, which is supposed to be Peter, dedicated to Jupiter? And when you get to Pope Gregory, this guy, I got to tell you, you, you do a little research into him, and you only have to do a little. You walk away, and you just got to scratch your head again and go, what the freak was this guy all about? One thing I can tell you about, he was very much a part of the dragon. Now, I don't know if that's good or bad, but he did have this fascination. So getting back to what happened, there was this divide in if I look at this, I'm old enough now to have seen many, many decades of what has now transpired in the Vatican. All I got to go is, holy crap. There is probably more foundation to Satan. I don't know about Lucifer because the two are not each other. They are not. They are separate. Satan is a different deity, a different being completely to what Lucifer is. I know it sounds weird, but as you can read here, this has been something that has been a struggle and has continued to be a struggle. Now, I believe with this new pope that is in here, I believe that the dark forces have won on this. But you need to read and understand why there is this pervasive now belief that something has changed. Something has changed in Christendom. Not sure what. The question we have to ask ourselves, was this the beginning? Was this the beginning of something much bigger? So let's get into some of the more the deeper part. The serpent, Satan, and the Vatican. This is going to really be mind-blowing. So we'll cover this, all right? So the serpent was referred to as the life-giving serpent, the divining serpent, and carried souls to the next life. I showed you that picture at the beginning of this video. So number one, serpent, Rome, winged serpent on chariots, carrying souls to heavens. All right, two, now Egypt, winged serpent, guardians, King Tut's throne, Cairo, Egypt. The serpent was mainly worshipped in Egypt as the life-giver. All right, three, Rome, the Roman bath and bath England. The serpent is a symbol of healing, right? I showed you that at the very beginning. Four, Mayan serpent, sun god, Quasicato, coming out of the mouth of the dragon. Island of Cosmodel, 1000 AD. All right, five, serpent cosiers were commonly carried by bishops and high Catholic church officials in the Middle Ages. They claim that the cosier represents the shepherd's crook, but it can be traced to the divining staff or augur of the pontiff Maximus of ancient Rome who inherited it from the priest of Babylon, Babylon Nimrod. Getting it? Number six, Serpent door handle on the Catholic St. Mary's Cathedral in San Francisco, California. What? Number seven. 
Although serpent symbolism in Catholicism is not prevalent, there are some curios aspects like this dragon on a large papal crest in the Vatican Museum. We showed you that. Revelations 12, 9, the dragon, the old serpent called the devil or Satan, not Lucifer, folks. All right, as well as the name Vatican that raises questions. Vatican comes the word from Vatus, which is diviner. Con is serpent. Vatican is divining serpent. The meaning of the word Vatican, the word Vatican comes from Latin and is the contraction of two words in the following one A. Vatus, which equals prophetic or diviner. Con is the serpent snake. These two words combined make the prophetic or made divine serpent. The Vatican is a place, so you may say the Vatican means the place of the prophetic and worshiped serpent. Think about this, folks. Yeah. Now, how in the world did Lucifer get connected to Venus or Venus get connected to Lucifer? Well, you have to understand the, the, the ancients, our ancestors, that lived not only 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 years ago, were bright people. They understood astronomy far better than what most of us do. Why? Because back there, the Earth's atmosphere was very much different, and it did have a tie-in. But the fact of the matter is this. Venus has always been the morning star, right? We all see it here. It's about to come up here in June, here in the next couple of uh, weeks. So as we can see, the correlation between the two. Lucifer is Venus, and Venus used to represent all that was pure and go good. The life giver, in fact. So since when did she become a he? Since the church said so, the church sacrificed Venus and set her as an example of evil, but they still hide behind her skirt when they do something naughty, imagine. So you can see, folks, there has been so much mis-disinformation. And by the way, most of the crap that you see coming out of Hollywood and have, have you, the modern construct of what hell and Satan is today is a direct result of coming out of the madness of the Dark Ages and the early 16th, 17th centuries. And what was really bizarre, our modern day construct of hell, that, you know, boy, if you don't accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you're going to hell forever, your name's going to... That is all made up, folks. It was made up by these individuals that were really ignorant. And when I talk about the ignorance of the ignorance, this cat, King James, took the top. Listen, the first book that this dude actually put together was the demonology of King James. He basically took what was the myths, the superstitions, and superstitions more than anything else, and collected them and put it in this book. You should read it. If you want to know some cantations, cast some spells, they're in there. Yeah, but this is the guy who also wrote the modern-day Bible. So the whole aspect of Satan stealing a soul and what have you is directly traced back to the Mid-Ages, particularly the Dark Ages, the plague time. They were so ignorant back then, and the church was in such fear of losing its control that it invented hell. It invented all of these demons that come out and the way that they steal your soul. In fact, if you know the truth of the matter is, even today, I hear more people in the Christian circles give more power to the devil. They always say, well, the devil is doing this, and they're constantly praying. Well, if this devil was defeated, then why are you continuing the battle? You see, it's a made-up construct, and it really is. So this is the Black Death, the souls of the victims, because of the devil. Why not? Again, read the book of demonology. You begin to understand. Now, this is one I always find it odd. You have Hindu gods in the Vatican. In fact, much of your revelations can be directly attributed and traced back to the Hindu religion. So which history is right? Which culture is right? Do you know about the blue people? Yeah. 
This drawing, by the way, is very revealing. Look at the God that's sitting over on the right and who he has in his midst. And notice again what he is sitting on. Now, these are the angels, supposedly, but you can even see that the depiction started a very long time ago, and it was set up. So what we have are all of these myths. As I said, Christianity is an amalgamation of a lot of different religions. We won't even get into the human sacrifice at the Vatican. That, that's a whole other story. So something is missing again. So why is it so prevalent within the seat of Christianity that they worship the sun? Not the S-O-N, the S-U-N. And when, when you begin to take science of what we know today of electromagnetic spectrum of light, then you begin to really ask yourself, Lucifer, the light bearer, right? He was never, by the way, his title was never stripped. If you want to look into it, you take it into the legend. And again, you find the strangest thing. Was Tesla around at the time the Vatican was being put together? Or are the UFOs in the Vatican and past beings all related? What we do know is the fact is every Easter, the Pope invokes the, I don't know what you want to call it, the blessing, the invocation of Lucifer. Not Satan, Lucifer. That's a misprint. It is not Satan. Get the difference in here. It is Lucifer. There's two different things. And when you start going through all of the mythology, all of the ancient knowledge, here you have the eagle and the serpent. Here you have the serpent again, along with the masons. And what you cannot deny is that the dragon and the reptile have a strong foundation, if not a direct connection, to the Christian religion. It's not just put up there for decoration, folks. And, and, and why are we seeing that of ancient religions, going back to Egypt, going back to Babylon, further? It's all there. And the other thing I found, which is so odd, for centuries, maybe actually for millennia, was the deep-seated hatred that particularly Catholicism has for the Jewish people. Why is that? In my beginning, I showed you the Ark of the Covenant being carried, and I said, whose God is this? It can't be both the Jew and the Christian. Can't. There's a direct dichotomy. And when we talk about symbolisms, why do we get this? You tell me. So for what purpose? That's the question I have. Is it really truly about dominance of the world? I mean, I threw this in here because this is another one of the bankers, all directly tied to the Vatican. And if you don't think the Vatican and astronomy do not have direct correlations you again are not learned. So my question as I end this video is, which God? Myth or fact? Are these creatures of legend? Were they merely made up in the perversity of perverted men? Or is there in fact something much more to this? Who is Lucifer? And why is it that Christianity, at its root and its foundation, worship Lucifer? In conclusion, Lucifer is not Satan, nor is it in the Hebrew or in the Bible. Again, in Isaiah, that was put in by Jerome. So who is Lucifer? Well, Lucifer means light bearer in the morning star. In pre-Christian mythology, he is called Shihar, Heli, and Ephorosos. Or the dawn bearer. He is not the fallen angel or a name of the devil, but the morning aspect of the planet Venus. Venus is also personified as a goddess called Aphrodite in the Greek, and there is no need to fear Lucifer or Venus, folks. Lucifer means light bearer, not devil, not Satan, 
Lucifer has been referred to Venus, the morning star. And if you want to accept that this is, in fact, a true being, the title has never been stripped. And as we go forward, we can begin to see how the Latin and to the English, may the morning star, which never sets, find his flame still burning, Christ the morning star, who came back from the dead and shed his peaceful light on mankind. Do you see? Okay, so now what? We've come and we've figured some things are not quite right. And this impacts the homo sapiens, us folks. And my question as I close this out, so which God? Which God is the right God? Which God is the true God? Which God is the superior God? And don't tell me that you've got your Bible because every one of these other religions got their Bibles too. And they can take you head and on. In fact, Christianity, when you look at a lot of these uh, religions, is really the Johnny come lately to the party. I'm just asking the question, folks. At some point in time, you will either reject this and just say, well, this is this heresy, and you will continue where you are. You're going to do like I and go, well, wait a minute. What's going on here? So as I close out on this, my question to you is, how long has this been known? And what I am finding out, my friends, this has been known for a very long time. 